Welcome to the Optos California product demonstration video, which provides an introductory overview on proper operation and imaging techniques. It is not intended to replace the initial on-site training or information provided by product documentation. Let's review the different parts of the California device. This is the scan head as it sits on the height adjustable table along with the touchscreen tablet and these are the forehead bar, face pad, chin rest, hand controller, and table height adjustment buttons. The server, which stores patient information and image files, should be on before starting up the California, but does not require login to be available to the scan head and viewing PCs. At the beginning of each day, remove the dust cover. If the device has been turned off, then locate the on-off rocker switch on the back and switch to the on position. If the device was put into sleep mode, you simply touch the blue indicator light to activate for capture. While the California is warming up, the tablet will cycle through a number of screens and perform various diagnostic tests before the indicator light at the bottom right turns green, indicating that the device is ready. This takes approximately three minutes. To log in, enter the username in the corresponding field or choose from the cards at the top, then enter the password and tap login. Please note that usernames and passwords are created in the Optos Vantage Pro admin application on the server. The device must be cleaned before each patient using an individually sealed 70% isopropyl alcohol wipe. Thoroughly wipe down areas that the patient will come into direct contact with, allowing sufficient time to dry before imaging. Do not let the cleaning wipes come into contact with the inside of the instrument. Do not use tissues or other material to dry the areas that have been cleaned, as this could cause dust to collect on the scan head mirror and optical components which may compromise image quality. Dim the lighting in the room to achieve maximum natural dilation of the pupils before attempting to capture an image. Please note that pharmacological dilation is necessary for FA and ICG imaging. You may enter any combination of the patient's last name, date of birth, or ID to access an existing record. If the record does not already exist, you can add a new patient by selecting the Add Patient tab and filling in the first and last name fields. Then enter date of birth, which is in the day, month, year format. You must also select appropriate gender, enter patient ID, and choose the practitioner before tapping the capture button, which will initiate system run-up, which takes approximately 15 seconds. Using the laminated sheet provided, explain to the patient that they will need to look straight ahead and align their eye with the fixation target that will be blue at first, then change to green as they move closer into the correct position, and finally changing to red if they are too close. Have the patient move forward so that they are sitting up tall directly in front of the device and looking straight ahead with their head turned slightly to the side. Adjust the table so the mark on the device lines up with the patient's canthus and their eye is visible on the tablet with the crosshairs centered on their pupil. Using the hand controller, raise the chin rest so that it will help support the patient's head at the correct height and instruct them to press their forehead against the bar. Depending on settings and configuration, your device may allow you to choose between either a screening Optimap or an Optimap Plus, which is a higher resolution image and used for a medically necessary procedure billed to insurance in certain areas of the world. Now confirm that the appropriate procedure and eye have been selected. Then fine tune patient alignment with the hand controller which can be used to move the device back and forth on the x-axis, 
up and down on the y-axis and in and out on the z-axis. You may also adjust alignment using the touchscreen to move the device in either the X or Y axis using this button or the Z axis with this button. Tapping the top button will move the device back to its neutral starting point. The chin rest can also be adjusted by selecting the support button and moving it up or down as necessary. You may capture an image by tapping the center of the screen when the patient's eye is optimally aligned. To capture an image using the hand controller, simply depress and release the button at the top. It is helpful to advise the patient when you are about to image in order to avoid capturing a blink as demonstrated here. Instruct the patient to open both eyes very wide and to not move or blink in order to minimize the presence of lids and lashes in the image. Selecting the middle tab on the lower portion of the screen will allow you to switch between red-green, autofluorescence, angiography, and angiography interweaved. We will now capture an autofluorescent image of the right eye. Then change laterality from OD to OS and instruct the patient to pull back slightly, turning their head and aligning their left eye with the target. Pressing the capture button when the crosshairs are centered on the pupil and the target is green. Now switch back to red-green and remind the patient they are free to blink between images, but they should open both eyes as wide as possible and not move or blink when told just before capture. Once the session is complete, the patient can sit back, and you may press the Images tab, which will allow for a review of all captured images. Touching any thumbnail once will open that image in the larger viewing window. Touching the thumbnail a second time will select that image for editing as indicated by a check mark. You may delete the selected images from the series by pressing the Delete button and confirming with Delete Now. If the imaging session is complete, select the Close button to exit the image review screen, then tap the Finish Patient tab and the images will be pushed to the server where they will be available for review. If an image is not labeled with the correct laterality, it may be changed by selecting it and touching the Swap Laterality button before closing the image review screen and exiting the session. Less than optimal or unusable images may be captured if the patient blinks, is in too close, too far back, or if the crosshairs are not well centered on the pupil. Due to the fact that images are captured during a three-tenths of a second scan, blinks tend to look like this. When the patient is too close, as indicated by the red target, you will see a lot of lid and lash, as well as the iris. When too far out, as indicated by the blue target, you will see iris or shadow cast by the iris. And when off-center, or if the patient moves, there may be artifact in only one portion of the image. Selecting the steering button at the top right will allow you to move the fixation target in order to change the patient's gaze and capture more of the retina in the nasal, inferior, temporal, or superior directions. Align the patient in the same manner you would for an on-axis image and capture when the target is centered over their pupil and has turned green. Notice how, in these examples of superiorly steered images, that the central pole is now lower 
and we are able to see considerably more of the superior retina. Auto capture may be enabled by selecting the auto button and choosing on, which will result in the device automatically capturing an image when the patient is aligned and the target turns green. If you are doing either an FA or ICG study on the patient, select Angiography, the study eye, and specific procedure being performed. You may start the timer by touching the start button or by depressing the capture button on the hand controller with elapsed time displayed here. Image contrast may be decreased or increased by using the slider button at any time during the study. It may be necessary to increase contrast at the beginning of the procedure and decrease once the die shows up in the image. When the study is complete, select Stop and confirm by pressing the Stop FA or ICG button. When you are performing a simultaneous FA and ICG study, select the Angiography Interweaved Procedure, confirm laterality for the study eye, and press either the Start button on the tablet or the Capture button on the hand controller to start the timer. The device will capture an ICG image first, then an FA, and alternate throughout the study. When the study is complete, select Stop and confirm by pressing the Stop FA and ICG button. You may begin a simultaneous FA and ICG study by selecting the Angiography Interweave procedure to start, which will allow you to capture alternating FA and ICG images. You may choose to override the interweave and manually select the desired images to be captured at any time during the session. By switching to the angiography procedure and choosing the desired image to be captured, you will now see two timers displayed and have the ability to manually switch back and forth between the two imaging modalities based on your specific protocol. When you are finished for the day, Touch the red shutdown button at the top left and confirm by tapping the Shut Down the System tab. The device will check for updates before entering standby mode, with the indicator light turning from green to blue. It is not necessary to turn off the device with the switch in the back. When in this state, you simply touch the blue indicator light to activate the device for capture. Over time, dust may accumulate on the mirror. To clean, remove the face pad and fold the corners of an OptiWipe together as shown. Then carefully reach into the cavity and using light downward strokes, wipe any dust particles off of the mirror. Ensure no jewelry is worn on hands to avoid scratching the mirror. Now snap the face pad back in place and put the dust cover over the device. Here is some guidance for use on patients with epilepsy. The device uses flashes of laser light. Some patients with epilepsy may be sensitive to flashes of light. Caution should be exercised for patients who have a history of reaction to camera flashes or strobe lighting. This concludes the Optos California demonstration video. If you have additional questions, please visit our website at www.optos.com to obtain contact information for the office nearest you.